It's David Croyle right now on Radio for Your Neighborhood, AM 1380 and FM 103.7, WTYM, Catanning Ford City. Good morning, Armstrong County. I'm David Croyle. Welcome to David and Friends. Glad to have you with us this morning. I have what I think is going to be a very interesting program for us today. I don't normally do too much of the international stuff because you can get it just about anywhere. I'm not just not sure, though, my guest this morning, if you're going to get this just anywhere because it seems like the media isn't really reporting it um, too much. So I thought, well, let's let's do it. So right now I'm making welcome Sully Hudaya. Good morning, Sully. Good morning. Now, Sully, you know, you're of the East Turkestan National Awakening Movement in Washington, D.C., and uh, there's a reason for that. So I, I want to just tell me the story. Let's go back and, and tell me why we're talking today. Well, uh, the reason we're talking today is because currently uh, over 3 million people in uh, occupied East Turkestan, or what China calls Xinjiang, or the New Territory, uh, are currently incarcerated in so-called uh, re-education camps, which are essentially uh, concentration camps or they are forced to denounce their uh, religious and ethnic identity and uh, embrace uh, Chinese communist ideology. Okay, now you say they're in camps. Now, uh, does this make up a specific group of people or that's it, it, there, or is this from many different uh, nations? Uh, well, so it's mostly the Turkic uh, people of East Turkestan. Uh, it's the Uyghurs, Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and Uzbeks, uh, and even some Tatars. Uh, it's specifically targeting the Turkic peoples of East Turkestan. Uh, and this is China's final attempt to solve their uh, East Turkestan problem. Uh, since they occupied this region in uh, December of 1949, they have been trying to uh, forcefully assimilate and colonize the region. And so the people have been fairly uh, resistant, not so violently, but resistant to like attempts to assimilate. All right. So basically you have... China that's coming in, and they're basically trying to occupy, and the people are saying no, we we don't want that. But they're just, but they're not being necessarily militant, which is why we don't hear a whole lot about this. At least I, I haven't. Um, so because it isn't an uprising, it isn't uh, bombs going off, that type of thing. But there are other things happening, right? Yes, I mean that even like you know the reason people aren't militant is because they they don't have anything to be militant with. Even uh, knives are illegal in, in the region. Um, in fact, only uh, one household is allowed to have one knife, and it's chained, you know, and it has a, a, a barcode on it, which has all the uh, family's information on it. So even if you were to get violent and, let's say, you use that knife against uh, uh, Chinese uh, military forces, you know, uh, they'll target your whole family and uh, pretty much kill your whole family for you doing something stupid. Oh my, we, we got to just pull this back and, and uh, unpack it here a little bit. So you're saying that basically the Chinese government allows them to have one knife, so if they want to cut their steak or whatever, and uh, but that's it in the, in the whole entire household. And, and of course you can have multiples in a household because uh, you, know, you don't necessarily like here you know, the kids grow up, they move away, whatever, but there many times there's, they continue living with parents. Yes, yeah, no, the worst part is, you know, they have uh, barcodes, I mean, and then the fact that in uh, they also have Chinese officials living with them in, in our own homes. Uh, there's, and this is according to the Chinese government, they sent 1.12 million officials to live in our homes, to monitor our activities, and ensure our loyalty to the state. Oh my. Oh my, I'm blown away by that. So, they actually take people and put a person in a home. How, how many people would be living in that home then? So it's uh, majority of the people in these camps are actually uh, male. Uh, the Chinese are fearful, you know, that our people might rise up. So they've locked up majority of our males uh, between the ages of 15 to uh, 65 on the basis that they are, quote, prone to radicalism or extremism or whatever, uh, whatever you may have, uh, whatever they say, you know. Um, but... Uh, the people that are left in the house are women. So you have Chinese male officials living with our women and uh, with the women of East Turkestan. And, you know, we don't know what's going on in these houses. 
they we do know that there have been stories of uh, rape. Uh, there ha- there is forced marriages in which the Chinese government is trying to force uh, East Turkestani women to marry uh, ethnically Han Chinese men. Uh, there's also the forceful uh, separation of over half a million uh, uh, Turkish children from their homes and sent to uh, government boarding schools or state-run orphanages. Okay, so they go in, they go, they, these, these male Chinese people going into the, the Turkish home, the, the, the fathers, the, the young men have already been removed from that home and put in prison camps, uh, just on, yes. on the suspicion that maybe they could become radical. And then basically yes. what's left over are the daughters and the mother and uh, maybe an aunt or someone because, again, many times the families live together because they have to. And so they're all there in the home with this other person and uh, who's there supposedly to keep the order, but uh, that doesn't always happen that way. And, uh, no, it's, it's, it's not. I mean, they, they say it's to, you know, China says it's, uh, it's actually right now since uh, some international uh, media has picked it up. They they're saying that it's actually vocational uh, training centers, and it's these training centers are designed to prevent quote terrorism, extremism, and separatism. I I thought it was interesting because CNN and we you know consider CNN fairly liberal here in the U.S. And so uh, here it says, uh, one of the headlines, China's still harvesting organs from prisoners at a massive scale. So maybe we can get a little bit into this because even CNN's co- collaborating this, that, they, that they're taking these males and they're putting them into camps. But what about, are they they're, they're killing them? Yeah, so there are reports, um, and even in my own family, uh, I've, I've had just in the past four months, I have over 100 millet relatives uh, in these camps. Um, you have over, I'm sorry, let me, let me ask you that again because I missed it. You said you have over how many? A hundred male relatives in these camps. Yourself? Yes, just in my father's side and my mother's side family. It's mostly on my father's side, over 80 relatives um, uh, because, we, uh, because of my political activities and then because of um, our past uh, uh, you know, uh, human rights and political activism that we had as a whole family. So they are threatened by that, and so they locked up every every one of the uh, males in our family. And, you know, even in our family, just the past four months, we, we've had three deaths confirmed uh, in the camps, and the bodies aren't returned to us uh, because the government, uh, it's illegal to have funerals there, too. It's, they dispose the bodies in so-called burial management facilities, which are crematories. So people are tortured in these camps. Um, their organs are harvested, and their their bodies are burned in crematories to hide the evidence. So it's it's a real genocide that's going on. Um, some foreign nationals uh, who happen to be of Kazakh citizenship uh, that were rounded up in the region when they were visiting their family members, you know, uh, they they uh, they stated that you know in these camps that they uh, witnessed many people die. Uh, they were starved. Uh, they were injected with various types of uh, medication. Um, they were tortured. Um, and then a few of them, you know, uh, were even executed. And, um, you know, they said, uh, and the ones that came out into Kazakhstan, a group of over 200 people, uh, uh, they said that, you know, the uh, majority of them, their, their reproductive organs are no longer functioning. Um, in, in, in terms of the males, the females are no longer able to have uh, uh, menstrual cycles, you know. Um, so, and some of them, you know, they have completely lost their mind. They don't even know who they are. Mm, mm. I'm just trying to take this in. It, again, you know, we, we, I don't hear about this. I mean, I just, if you do, it's, it's sort of so glossed over. We don't, I guess we don't pick up on it. But, but this is something very real to you because... It's your family that's also a part of this. Yes, yes. I mean, this is something that's been going on, especially since 2016. Um, this is when China started these camps. And, you know, it's only increasing day by day. We thought, you know, uh, they'll just, you know, arrest a few people, a couple hundred thousand maybe, just to scare the rest of the population. But it's just... Are you still there? Um, there you go. Okay. Yes. You dropped there for a it second. Seems, oh, it seems China is bent on, you know, um, 
wiping out our, our entire culture, our ethnic group. Well, basically, once you if if they started in 2016, so once they get through this group, this um, uh, this uh, age group. Well, they're uh, go ahead. Yeah, and and they're also like building camps in Tibet as well. Um, they started off with us now, and it seems uh, that they're building uh, concentration camps in Tibet as well. So they're calling them re-education camps, but. Uh, yeah, at first they called them re-education camps, and then they changed it. Now they're calling them vocational training centers. Hmm. Wow. Wow. The new report from CNN says that China is still engaged in the widespread and systematic harvesting of organs from prisoners and says that people who view con conflict with the, uh, whose views conflict with the ruling Chinese Communist Party are being murdered for their organs. So basically, then they're, what are they doing? Selling the organs? So, yeah, they're either selling it inside China or uh, selling it uh, in, the, in the global black market. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm trying to absorb this as we go through because this almost sounds like a movie line. <laughs> You know, a plot and from a from a movie, and it's not. This is a reality. No, there, no it, it is a very much a reality because even in East Turkestan, in the airport, there's a special line with arrows saying "organs only." Really? Like, there's actual photographic evidence of this of various airports in East Turkestan. On the ground, there's arrows that says "for organs only," uh, whereas people that way they can just rush it through. Um, and then there's a lot of, uh, even uh, a lot of, um, doctors that were, uh, forced to, you know, uh, work with the Chinese government to, uh, harvest the organs of, um, former prisoners who came out of the country who fled and they, uh, they gave detailed testimonies on this as well. The Associated Press says the U.S. envoy calls China Muslim camps horrific and wants probes. It says the camps sprang up over the past two years at an extraordinary speed and on a massive scale as monitored by satellite imagery. China maintains a massive security presence and efforts to independently verify claims by activists are routinely blocked. So therefore, how do you know what's going on? So much of the information we get is actually uh, by reviewing Chinese government reports um, and then also, you know, foreign um, citizens who happen to be in the region, uh, they later come out and they tell us, oh, this is what I saw. And then you have the former detainees who uh, gave detailed testimonies about this. And then you have thousands of people, uh, tens of thousands of people like myself uh, that have relatives back in East Turkestan living, you know, um, in the West. And uh, we've all given testimonies about this. Uh, we've, much of us have not been able to uh, get in contact, but, um, you know, some of us, uh, we have managed to get lucky and was able to, you know, get some news out of the uh, region. Uh, but most of the news that we get is from, like, government procurement bids, uh, government uh, reports, you know. It was, uh, like, we wouldn't know about the fact that China, um, you know, uh, collected the DNA samples, voice prints, and retina scans of over 36 million of our, uh, 36 million people in East Turkestan if China's state media hadn't run that themselves. Sully Hudaya is my guest this morning on David and Friends, and we're going to take a real quick break and then get back to more of this interview as we ended up today. Wow. I, this is why we need to know these things. That's why I kind of broke from the way we normally do the show to do this, because I think this is important. Let's check regional sports, and I'll be right back. Right here, AM 1380, FM 103.7 WTYM. My guest today, Sully Hudaya. And Sully is uh, with the East Turkestan National Awakening Movement. You can go online and find out more about that by going to nationalawakening.org. He's in Washington, D.C. And, uh, Sully, you've been in D.C., what, a couple of years now? Yes. Okay. So uh, you, you came here. Uh, did, you, did you come here right before all this started to happen? Yeah, uh, I actually came to the United States uh, about 18 years ago. Oh, okay. Um, so I've been here, I uh, pr practically grew up uh, in Oklahoma, actually. Wow, uh, going from Oklahoma to D.C., <laughs> that's, a, that's a, a pretty big jump in and of itself. 
yes. Well, let's just, you know, you, you've explained, and I'm, I'm going to just uh, kind of editorialize here for a minute, but this is the kind of stuff, folks, that drives me up a wall when we talk about going to the various stores and we're buying the Chinese junk that's over there, and we do it because why? It's a buck or under $5 or whatever the particular store happens to be selling. And, uh, you know, when you look on it, it says made in China. And these are the things that uh, for a while now that has bothered me because we've chosen the price over the content of what's going on in in that nation. We, because it's because it really doesn't affect us per se every day, we just kind of like ignore it. And uh, when we hear reports like this, we say, oh, that's, that's really too bad. But then we're going to go out and buy the Chinese junk today. That really kind of should make you stop and pause when you hear these things that uh, that Sully is telling us today. So Sully, basically, what what can we, as the average American, what can we do? What's our call to action on this? Well, the first thing that um, we as average Americans can do is, you know, to spread awareness about what's going on, you know, share the information with others. Um, you know, also to call our members of Congress, representatives uh, and senators uh, to, you know, um, say, uh, to enact, uh, you know, legislation to uh, enact uh, extensions against the Chinese officials that are responsible for these uh, human rights uh, atrocities. Um, also, uh, you know, uh, ask Congress to officially recognize, uh, you know, uh, what's going on in East Turkestan as a genocide in accordance with the uh, Elie Wiesel Genocide Prevention Act and the UN uh, uh, Genocide Convention. Uh, that being said, to also recognize East Turkestan as an occupied territory, like um, they represent, they recognize Tibet. That way, uh, international community can get involved without, quote, being involved in so-called China's internal affairs. Okay, so uh, in all honesty, though, between the two of us, you know, with the current Trump administration, do you really see that there's that there's hope for that to happen in a, in a fairly quick order i mean in a fairly quick order i, I to be honest i don't i don't uh i don't think that it, it's going to be very quick i mean we've been trying to push for a legislation for uh over a year now um we've been trying to push for sanctions in almost two years now and still nothing um but uh and that was because mainly didn't have a whole lot of awareness about the situation. But given the fact right now there's a lot of information and there's credible reports and testimonies, um, I think uh, that that might uh, change uh, how the United States government uh, um, reacts. Uh, they've already the State Department has already uh, said that it's uh, last week. They said that they're considering uh, sanctioning uh, Chinese officials responsible for um, this uh, mass uh, atrocities that are being committed in East Turkestan. Well, I wish you well in your, I don't know if I want to call it fight or your educational process, but I'm glad that we had an opportunity to talk today. And uh, as things progress, please um, keep us in the loop so that we can uh, possibly do a little bit more on this and know a little bit more about what's going on because um, you know, this is definitely not part of who Americans are. This is not what we uh, subscribe to. But yet, uh, as I said earlier, we tend to let it go on, and that's just not right. But Sully Hudaya, thank you so much for joining us today. You can find him at nationalawakening.org. Have a great day. Thank you. All right. I'll tell you what, when you pick up that little thing you're going to buy today and it says Made in China, it makes, makes you stop and think a little bit differently, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, can you imagine the, the, the United States government sending somebody into your home to live with you because they didn't trust you? Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, i got to get out of here. I'm the David. You're the friend. Thank you so much for being with me on David and Friends. And by the way, I say it, but I mean it. Thank you so much for being my friend. Talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for listening in the morning. We only wish you'd do one thing. Get dressed. Yeah. Radio for your neighborhood. AM 1380 and FM 103.7. WTYM. Catanning. Ford City.